right it looks like we are live welcome everyone to an english lesson about health and fitness now remember i am an english teacher i am not a fitness instructor a fitness instructor is someone who might help you with your fitness i'm also not a dietitian a dietitian is someone who might help you with your diet I am simply an English teacher, and in this lesson, we are going to discuss English terms you might use when talking about health and fitness. Before we get started with the lesson, though, I would like to welcome a few people to the chat. Betty Lou, she used a very nice emoji with a heart, so thank you. I'm glad you're here. Reza's here. Reza says, best English teacher ever. I don't know if that is true, but I will gladly thank you for that. And Cecilia are, is here. Welcome, Radu. What Radu says, Brent, on what days of the week do you live stream regularly? Saturdays. Saturdays. Although summer is coming up and I will not have to teach in a classroom during the summer, so you may see a few more live streams during the week. Yulia is here. Maria is in the house. Luke, it's good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. I do have a question for everyone. Just so we get to know each other a little better. Which country are you from? Now, I know. I know some countries that people are from. I don't want to say that though. I would like for them to tell us the country they are from and then maybe you will meet a friend. Maybe you will meet someone from your country. Apple the Frog was here too. I think, hey, Casey's here. Welcome. Radu, Canada. I had no idea. Well, welcome. Welcome. Well, Casey, I'm glad you said treadmill because guess what? Treadmill will be coming up. Chili. Chili is in the house. That's the way Americans say it. Chili. But you probably say it a little better than we do. Is it Chile? Something better? Or Chili? That's what we say. Chili. South Korea is in the house. Apple the frog. I think Thailand. Thailand is well represented. All right. Let's get into ooh, one thing before the lesson starts. I would like to thank three people. Where is it? Three people. YouTube started something new, something called the Super Thanks. And over the last couple of weeks, three people have given me Super Thanks on a lesson. So thank you so much, Leticia, Mega. Sita, thank you. Thank you so much. I got a little something for you. It's right here. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, that is awesome. It was a surprise when that happened. I didn't even see when Sita left hers. I think it was two weeks ago. So thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. All right, before we get started with the lesson, one more thing. And this comes from channel member. Her name is Cecilia. And guess what? She's in the chat right now. But she left me a message on Discord. Channel members are allowed to do that. If you would like to become a channel member, there's a link somewhere in the chat. She says, one more thing, please. Tomorrow's live stream. Can you talk about the connection between doing sports and learning language and yes i think she says thank you so much i think that's a great idea before we get started with that i think there is a huge connection between three things i'm going to add learning a musical instrument so when you're working out when you're becoming healthier or you're learning to play an instrument or you're learning a language these are skills that take a long time to develop. 
Many people want to see results quickly. They want to get better quickly. But unfortunately, getting really good at a sport, getting really healthy, learning English, or playing a musical instrument, those things take a long time. Be patient. Think about how well you do each month or each year. Because I know when I'm learning my language, Italian, sometimes I will have good days and I feel like, wow, I learned a lot. In other days, I might study for an hour and feel very frustrated, like I don't know anything. So learn to take those bad days that you have and don't get too frustrated, all right? Same with working out. There are some days you don't want to go to the gym and you feel worse when you leave the gym. But I promise, do it enough and you will get better. You might not see it every single day. Look back a month later, a year later, you will be getting better. All right, let's get into the lesson. Wow, that's a lot of talking. That's six minutes before we've done our first word. Well, fear no more. Let's do this. Today's lesson is all about health and fitness. And along the way, I will have sentences that will show up on the screen and they will help you practice shadowing if you would like. To shadow, you can pause the video after I say the sentence or you can try to say the sentence right along with me. And of course, if you're watching on replay, even if, even if you are watching live, you can rewind, you can go back and practice. The first thing somebody might do if they want to become healthier is get a gym membership. Most towns in the United States We'll have a gym and at that gym, you can lift weights. We're going to talk about the different weights you can lift in a minute. You can also do some exercises. Casey, I think earlier mentioned treadmill. We will go over the treadmill, but the place where you might work out, we call a gym. Notice how it's spelled. A person's name, like the guy on the office, his name is going to be spelled differently. Why? Well, because we like to make things tough in English. Gym, a person's name, gym, where you work out. Freddie Wolf is here. I want to say a quick hello to him. And you know what? Adi the tie is here. Adi the tie. He works out. I know he does. I've seen it. Hey, Juan's here too. Hey, you're new? Well, welcome. Welcome. Glad to have you from Colombia. You know what? I think South America is really represented today. Wait a second. Sita. Brazil. Yeah, Brazil. Definitely. Definitely. Natalia says, be patient with our awkward English mistakes. Never give up with the lessons. Hey, making mistakes is good. Making mistakes is good. And I know that probably everyone in here is an English learner. We are going to make mistakes. That is okay. Mistakes are fine. Do you know how many? Oh, in the discord this week, the private members discord we were talking about that i probably um, you know what what happens in discord stays in discord but uh there was a meme talking about how english learners try to make everything perfect they try to make their english completely perfect and guess what native english speakers we make tons of mistakes so yeah don't be too worried about mistakes. 
Native English speakers make them all the time. Who cares? The next vocabulary term you might use if you're working out, getting healthier, is scan. One of the first things you might do when you go to your gym is you might have to scan your membership card. When you join a gym, when you get a membership, they might give you a card. It might look like a credit card. They might give you a gym membership card, or if the gym is big enough, they might have an app. But when you first enter the gym, you will probably have to scan. That's the verb we use. You will probably have to scan your membership card or scan a barcode on the app. If you see that white rectangle in the picture and it has all the black lines, we would call that a barcode. We would call that a barcode. So here's a sentence you can practice shadowing with. One of the first things you might have to do when you first enter the gym is scan your membership card. Just check the chat to make sure there are no questions. There you go, Apple. Scan. Casey, yeah, you might have a QR code before you enter the gym. Maybe a QR code is a square, a square um, kind of code that you use your phone, you use your phone with. So yeah, nice one. Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> Radu says, scanning your membership card, just like when you're scanning your Captain Crunch cereal box at the grocery store. I know this is not about cereal, but oh, a bowl of Captain Crunch sounds really good right now. Lucky Charms. Uh, lots of sugar. Wait, wait, wait. This English lesson is about fitness. We can't eat sugary cereals. Okay. Forget I said Lucky Charms. No more talk of Captain Crunch. Unhealthy. Unhealthy. All right. Is that what it stands for? The QR code? Quick response code? I had no idea. I'm learning. Apparently, apparently it is. I am learning something today too. Thank you for that. It's my language. I should know it, right? QR code. Let's see. I have another sentence for you right here. When talking about health and fitness, if someone wants to get in shape, they might get a gym membership. So when we talk about becoming healthier, you might hear that get in shape, man, I need to join the gym. I need to get in shape. The next one is running partner. Do you know this term running partner? And it's just like it sounds. That would be someone you know, maybe a friend, maybe a family member, and you say to them, hey, I want to get in shape. Do you want to get in shape? Let's become running partners. That just means maybe you have a time in the morning, you will meet somewhere and you will run together. The reason some people get running partners is motivation. Okay. Motivation. That is a term we use when you feel like you want to do something. So right now, I hope you are motivated to learn English. That's what we're here for, right? To learn English. A running partner may help you stay motivated. So maybe in the morning, you're supposed to go running, but you don't feel like it. So you are in bed thinking, oh, I don't want to run today, but you know what? I don't want to let my partner down. 
when you let somebody down, it means you disappoint them. So you might say, oh, I need to meet my running partner. I don't want to let them down. Did you hear what I said there? Wanna. I don't want to let them down. I don't want to let them down. I don't want to let them down. The opposite of motivated might be to dread something. I dread going to the gym every day. So if you don't want to do it, you might dread it. You might fear it. You might not want to do it. I hope you don't dread learning English every day. Hopefully you find English to be fun. So let's talk about a couple things that you do before you work out and after. And one of those things is warm up, warm up. You want to do this before you start exercising. You should warm up before there is a, there is a typo in that. I went through this to make sure there were no typos. Well, let's work on, there is something wrong in that sentence. So let's work on it together. You should warm up before you're exercising so you don't get injured. Did I write that sentence? I don't like that sentence. At the very least, your is spelled wrong. All right. At the very least, but it's still not a great sentence to practice shadowing. But at least let's get it. Let's get it to that point. And then maybe I will fix it after. You should warm up before you're exercising so you do not get injured. <sighs> There's something wrong there. It's fine. It's grammatically, it's correct. I just think I could have worded it a little better. Like, yeah, we use that term. When the wording is off, the sentence doesn't sound right. It's something off with the wording. Do you know that? Wording. We, we like an English teacher will use that. I use that with my students. Mm, there's something off with the wording. So you may need to arrange the words in a different order to make it sound uh, perfect. But remember, in English speaking, in English writing, there isn't anything like that's perfect. There are a couple different ways you could do it. But the people in the picture right there, they are stretching. They are stretching. That's what we call it, stretching. And that is so you don't get injured. The reason you warm up is to prevent injuries. Guess what? The next one is cool down. And if you notice, the picture is exactly the same. Cool down is what you do after you work out or after you exercise. And here's a sentence. When you warm up or cool down, you might stretch. That is one thing you could do. And both are designed to help prevent injuries. Warming up and cooling down. Those might be a couple difficult English phrasal verbs that you might use. I need to warm up before I start exercising. Oh, Reza, that is so very kind of you. Thank you so much for the super chat. I have a little something for you right here. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. That is so kind of you. Did you give that super chat because you were sad that I made that mistake there? That I had that typo? Well, Reza, thank you. Thank you so much. And I think earlier you said I was the best teacher ever, so... 
gold star for you today, my friend. <laughs> Thank you so much, Reza. That is super nice. All right. I don't know. I... Thank you for mentioning this, Radu. So when we talk about running and we talk about jogging, they are basically the same thing. Basically the same thing. You could have a running partner. You could have a jogging partner. Same thing. They both mean the same thing. Hey, I'm going to go jogging. I am going to go out for a run. When exercising, they pretty much mean the same thing. Now, there might be one difference where running is a little faster than jogging. But a lot of times when we talk about jogging, we talk about running. At the end of the lesson, we are going to talk about sprints. Now, that's that's quite different. It's more when sprinting and jogging never the same. Okay. We will get to that a little bit later, a little bit later. Let me check the chat here again. Reza, thank you so much. Look at this, Radu. Practicing your English. This is a very nice sentence. Let me, let me correct this to make sure there are no mistakes. You should warm up before exercising in order to avoid any injuries. I would say that is a very good sentence. In fact, I might say that sentence is perfect. I, I can't make it any better. So, Reza, again, thank you so much. Wait, Maria, what's your specialty? Cooling down? Warming up? Sprinting? Uh, Maria works out too. Maria is a runner. I know Cecilia works out and I know Audie works out. And I know if Luke is still here, he is also very much into nutrition. Luke will often say, the foods I'm eating are not good. And I know Luke, they are not good, but they taste so good. They're not good for me. They just taste good. So we'll, we'll talk about those. Oh, yes. I thought so, Maria. Yes. Maria's specialty is running. She has run in some marathons. Nice. Oh. She forgot the G. But when I read it, it looked fine to me. Running. And, and that's the way we pronounce it, really. Running. We don't running. Hey, I'm going to go for a run. Oh, are you running? Yeah. I'm running. Brian's here. Welcome. All right. Oh, geez. Casey, don't you love English? Yeah, we can use jogging when you do when you do something like this. Maybe that's 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 me jogging. Jogging. What who on friends? If you've seen the TV show Friends. Was it Phoebe who had a hard time running? And it was it was Rachel, right? Didn't they make fun of her the way she ran? Make fun? All right, jog the memory. Yeah, you could jog somebody's memory. That means you make them remember something. Has nothing to do with health and fitness. Don't you love English? You can learn a word like jog in your mind. Oh, oh. I know what jog means. Yes. Wait, jog my memory. What does that mean? Casey, thank you for that. Thank you for that. All right. Jasper is wondering, is there any difference between injure and wound? No, I think in some cases they can be used in the same way. Um, I don't, I don't want to get too Okay. Let's stick to health and fitness, okay? With health and fitness, you would not use wound. You would not use wound. But let's say I cut my skin, okay? I cut my skin and I'm bleeding. We could call that an injury or we could call that a wound. But 
you wouldn't say I wounded myself at the gym yesterday. If I heard that, I might think they dropped some weights on their head. So an injury when you're working out, that probably means you pulled a muscle. I don't have a lot of injuries in this lesson, but when you pull a muscle, it means you worked too hard and you might feel bad for a couple days. Your muscle might hurt. I didn't talk too much about injuries though, but that's a great question. So when you're talking about working out, health and fitness, stick to injury, stick to injury. Is it Phoebe? <laughs> Phoebe runs weird. Okay, great. Yeah, bicycling. I don't have anything here on bicycling, but let's, oh. Harry, cramps. Let's talk about cramps for a second. You can get cramps in your muscles. That's when they really hurt. Um, but you can also get cramps in your stomach. So if you're running for a long time and your stomach hurts, you could call that a cramp or you might call that a stitch, a stitch in your stomach. You might hear that sometimes. Hey, Mega's here. Mega, I thanked you earlier in the lesson for your super thanks that you gave this morning. So good to see you here. Thank you. Yeah, you might have a stitch in your stomach when you first start running and you feel a pain in your stomach. You could say, oh, I have to stop running. I have a cramp or I have to stop running. I have a stitch in my stomach. English speakers will know what you mean. All right. No way. Ada, yoga, yoga instructor. I almost talked about yoga in this lesson, but I thought yoga is probably the same in every language, right? Yeah, probably. Hello. Good evening. Welcome. Not a stitch. You can use cramp if you want, but don't stop running. Unless you're injured, unless you're injured. Um, we do have something called shin splints. Oh no. Do you know where your shin is? Uh, this is not part of the lesson, but since we're talking about injuries, see, can I find a picture? Yeah. I'm going to find a, a picture and use it here. And then we can learn two things. We can learn where your shins are not a very popular body term and then we can uh, learn what shin splints are but when you first start running you might get shin splints and here we have a, a picture of this person and they are holding their shins shin splints for runners can be very serious so the shin is the front of the bottom of your leg that person has their hand on their shin and there is a a pain that you feel after running called shin splints i wonder if maria has ever gotten shin splints what stitches get stitches <laughs> what are we talking about here Thank you, Radu. Shin, the front part of your leg. Wow. To explain snitches get stitches, that would take a long time. And it has nothing to do with health or fitness. But it's funny. Snitches, that is someone who tells on another person. Maybe a little kid will say, hey, Joey broke the vase. He tells his mom on his brother, Joey did something bad. And so uh, that basically means if you tell on somebody, if you try to get somebody in trouble, you're going to get hurt. Stitches. That's when you have a really bad cut on your skin, you can get stitched up. You can get stitches. So 
hopefully hopefully that helps snitches get stitches that's a funny thing all right we got we got to get back to the lesson i am so distracted right all right let's see how do i do this i want to get back to my there we go we were talking about cool down i have a lot of slides to share with you the next one is workout i have been using that term quite a bit workout but what i want to do is show you the difference between the verb to work out and the noun i need to get a workout in so if you're if you're speaking you really don't have to worry about this but if you're reading or you're writing this might be helpful This is the way we use it as a verb. You could work out by going to the gym. That would be used as a verb, as something you do. But you could use workout as a noun. You could get a workout in at the gym. You could get a workout in at the gym. Hope that helps. There are two prepositions side by side, but that is something you will hear in English. You could get a workout in at the gym. I promise, promise. There it is as a verb. You could work out by going to the gym. All right, I'm not going to check, check the chat for a little while because every time I do, I get distracted. So many good comments in the chat. As I say, I'm not going to check the chat. I check the chat. Yes, Mega is from India. The Ario, I don't think Ario is here, but in one of my, or in, a, in the comment section, in the comment section of one of my favorite YouTubers, his name is Steve Kaufman. I saw uh, Ario left a message, so I left Ario a message and Steve Coffin, he knows many languages. He knows about 20 and his next language, his 21st language, he is going to pick one from India. He, he thinks he's going to start learning Hindi, but he's not sure. Let's see, Natalia. Hey Brent, can we say to work out an idea or a project? Yes, yes. Um, if you're stumped, when you're stumped, it means you don't know how to do something. So if you're stumped on a project, you could try to work out a way to fix it. Yeah, Natalia, absolutely. Thank you. It's a good one. All right. And Audi says, I can work out in my home. And Audi is a gold member. So we uh, send volleys back and forth. I have seen his, um, we could call it a home gym a home gym so that is a place in your house or your apartment where you work out so hey my home gym you might have some some weights there betty lou is saying achilles heel it's a great one that's in the back of the foot what we call the achilles heel hey and arone is here welcome i think i will be seeing arone here very shortly and in person He's coming to the United States. Let's see. Dennis, is it really possible to combine in and at? Like to get in a workout at the gym? Oh, yes, absolutely. You will hear that quite often from native speakers. Yeah. There is no typo there. You could get a workout in at the gym. I promise. Is it grammatically correct? Is it what native English speakers sometimes say? Yes. Yeah. Crazy, huh? We break the rules all the time. And I'm sure in your native language, you do as well. But, oh, the next one. This hits a little close to home. When something hits close to home, you feel it. The next one is overweight overweight and you can see by the picture 
what overweight is. Now, when you go to the doctor, if you are overweight, you might be put in to one of three categories. Let's look at that sentence right there. These are the three categories. I lost it. Being overweight is bad, but being obese is even worse and being morbidly obese is the very worst. So what I tried to do there was combine three English vocabulary terms, but also talk about how you would compare those three terms. So this sentence is written really well, I would say, and it combines three things. I'm sorry. It compares three things. Being overweight is bad, but being obese is even worse. And being morbidly obese is the very worst. So notice worse, worst, bad, three ways to compare things that are bad. Yeah. So if you go to the doctor and they say you are morbidly obese, that's a problem. That's a problem. Anytime you hear the word morbid, we usually think of death. So if somebody is morbidly obese, it's like you need to lose weight soon or bad things are going to happen to you. One way you can get healthier is to do this, cut back on unhealthy foods, or you might cut out unhealthy foods. So let's talk about the difference between cut back and cut out. Okay. And I do believe I have a sentence for you. Cutting back means you are doing something less often. McDonald's. That looks like a picture of maybe some McDonald's fries. So let's say I eat McDonald's fries five times a week. Five times a week. If I wanted to cut back on McDonald's fries, I wouldn't eat them five times a week. I would eat them four times a week. That would be cutting back. Still very unhealthy, but you're cutting back. You're doing something less often. Maybe you want to cut back to one time a week with the McDonald's fries. They aren't very healthy at all. But if you cut out, if you cut out, it means you're not doing it anymore. And here's a sentence for you. If you cut something out, it means you're not doing it anymore. Okay. So with the McDonald's fries, you probably want to cut that out of your diet. Stop eating them. No more fries. Every once in a while, I like to get McDonald's fries. I'm sorry, Luke. It's good stuff. Salty. <laughs> We're going to talk about salt here in a minute. Blissful Mummy is here. Welcome. Hopefully you're doing well. Let's see, what is this, Natalia? You know what? Even though you eat just healthy, healthy food, if you don't exercise, is worse, is it? Exercising is good, yeah. But uh, and I'm not a, I'm not a. Look at that, Betty Lou. And remember, I'm not a nutrition, so I don't know. I don't know what the best thing to do is, but uh, Natalia, I think that sounds good. A little exercising, a little eating healthy should really help. Oh gosh, Natalia, the monsters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should definitely cut back on the monsters. I should cut back. I have um, one monster a day. Seven days a week, I have a monster when I wake up. Instead of coffee, no coffee. But if I wanted to cut back on those monsters, 
Maybe only five days a week. Oh, but they wake me up. They wake me up. There you go. Audi, got that six pack. When we talk about six pack and we're talking about working out, we're talking about the muscles in your stomach. So if you can see six muscles in your stomach, three on each side, we call that a six pack. Yeah, cut down, cut down, cut down and cut back. Alexander says they are equal. Yes, they definitely are equal. Yep, you know what? I'm going to try to cut down on those monsters. I'm going to try to cut back on those monsters. Probably not. Probably not. All right. Junk food. Junk food. In this picture, I could use the term junk food for that. I could use sweets. I could use sweets for that because most of those foods right there have sugar in them. Junk food, though, could also include those fries. Anytime food is not healthy for you, you might hear it referred to as junk food. Nice one. Nice one. Yeah. Cut down. Cut back. They are also alike. Don't you love those phrasal verbs? It, it gets worse. Watch. We're, hang on. Just when you think, oh, I can figure out phrasal verbs. No. Well, we got some more. Like up. Hey, one thing I wanted to mention. This has nothing to do with health or fitness. But gas up. Gas prices are getting expensive. But gas up. We have that phrasal verb. So instead of saying, I am going to fill my car up with gas. Or I am going to put gas in my car. I can say, I'm going to go gas up. Okay. That you might hear a native English speaker say that for putting gas in their car. Hey, I'm going to go gas up. Hey, I'm going to go gas up. It's just, I'm going to put gas in my car. I'm going to go gas up. I'm going to gas up. Yeah. You might hear them say that going to gas up. Not about health and fitness, but I just wanted to mention that English phrasal verb because I thought of it this week. Gas up. That might be difficult. Harry, you have a one pack? That's great. That's progress. That's good. All right, Blissful Mommy says she's cutting down on the sugar, cutting back on the sugar. So good though, right? Tastes so good. Yep, we can use both. Hey, I'm going to go gas up the car or I'm going to go fill up the car. Yeah, putting gas in there. All right, the next one. Let's go. Cut out. Fatty foods. So this is a little bit different from junk food. If you look at that picture right there, you will see fried chicken. You will see chips or you will see potato chips. In the United States, we say chips. I think if you go to England, another country that speaks English, you will hear them say crisps. We don't say that here. We say chips. So those could be considered fatty foods. Those are foods that have a lot of fat. Fried chicken has a lot of fat. Anything fried will probably have fat. Americans like fat foods, <laughs> fatty foods so much. There are places in the United States. I've never had this, but you can go and they will serve you fried butter, fried butter. I know you know what butter is. That's a very common English word. And if you fry something, you put batter on it. That fried chicken has batter on the outside of it. Batter. So with fried butter, 
you put a stick of butter in this batter and then you fry it. Has anyone in the chat heard of fried butter? Butter, one of the most fattening foods of all. It's a very fatty food. And then you fry it. I mean, I think a person who eats fried butter just, just wants a heart attack, right? Like, hey, I'm, I want my heart to just stop working. Let me try this fried butter. Let's see if we can pull up some fried butter here. I'll sh just in case you think, wait a second. I knew Americans were unhealthy. Hey, they wouldn't fry up butter, would they? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, we would. Right here. Let me see if I can share this with you. Fried butter. Just so you know, I am not lying. There's a recipe. If you want some deep fried butter, there is a recipe for it. That just sounds gross to me. And guess what? I will never know if that tastes good. I mean, I'm not the healthiest person on earth, but fried butter, that, I gotta draw a line somewhere. I will eat McDonald's fries. I will not cross the line to eat fried butter. Some people may say, well, McDonald's fries are just like fried butter. And you might be right, but wow, it just sounds bad. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I can say that out loud, but what Radu said. Yeah, exactly. You don't, yeah. You don't. All right. Freddie Wolf. I hope nobody feels bad. I'm sure he's done the research. Luckily in the United States, we use pounds. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm overweight or obese or morbidly obese. I'm guessing I'm at least overweight. But since I, I don't know what kilograms are pretty much. All right. You can pause that if you'd like. That's that's probably going to make me feel bad. Wait, hunger? Hunger? You know, I don't think Remember, I'm not a doctor, but I don't think you should starve yourself. All right, let's go. We'll get back to this here. Get back to this. Uh the the credit uh, the uh the chat is so funny though. Yeah. Thank you, Cecilia. Yeah, please. Can we can we all just say please don't eat that? Please. Nobody in here. Fatty foods are bad enough. You don't need fat fried in fat. No. Okay. The next one. Sodium. Sodium. Getting back to the lesson. The next one is sodium. Now, all sodium is is salt. But when you're talking about diets, you might hear it called sodium, okay, in English. And here's a sentence for you. Sodium is a fancy way to say salt. You will hear this a lot when people talk about their diets. You probably know that if someone is going on a diet, they are trying to cut out sodium, they're trying to cut out sweets, they're trying to cut out junk food. They're trying to cut out fatty foods. If somebody goes on a diet, maybe you cut it out completely. Or maybe you just cut back. Sodium. Next one. Actually, the next four, I think it is. Slim up. That means you try to take off some weight. Slim if something is slim, it's not very wide. If something is wide, it might this this might be wide. This is slim. Okay, wider, slimmer. So if people want to lose weight, they might try to slim up. They might try to slim up. Or they might trim up. You will hear both. 
I'm going to try to slim up. Summer is coming. I need to get into that bikini. I need to trim up. But here's the problem. Here is the problem. Slim up, slim down, pretty much the same thing. This is why when you think, oh, I know phrasal verbs. I can figure it out. We have phrasal verbs with opposite words in them. Up and down, up and down, the opposite. But guess what? They can mean the same thing. Slim up, slim down. Pretty much the same. Hey, I want to go to the beach this summer. I need to slim up a little bit. I want to go to the beach this summer. I need to slim down a little bit. Same meaning. We also have trim up, trim down, slim up, slim down. They all mean the same thing. They all mean you want to lose a little weight. Hey, I need to trim up a little bit. I'm going to the beach this summer. You also might want to bulk up. You might want to bulk up. That person in the um, picture, he has a lot of muscles. He has a lot of muscles. Bulking up means you add muscle to your body. The person in the picture is very muscular. That's the adjective we use when somebody has a lot of muscle. We can say that person in the picture is muscular. It seems that they have bulked up. They have bulked up. So when you bulk up, that means you lift a lot of weights, lift a lot of weights. Now you would probably want to look at that man instead of me. So I will put his picture there for a couple minutes. He's very bulky. He's very muscular. Okay. Back to me, back to the lesson. A couple ways you might want to bulk up is by using free weights. If you look at the picture, that is what we call free weights. There are two types of ways you can lift weights. You could do it with free weights or you can do it with something called a Nautilus machine. So both of them are using weights, but one might be a little bit safer than the other, but one might be a little bit more limited than the other. Some people use Nautilus machines because it feels more comfortable to them. Some people like to use free weights. If you lift weights, you might use free weights or a Nautilus machine. Free weights, Nautilus machine. Let me know in the chat, do you prefer free weights or do you prefer a Nautilus machine? One advantage of a Nautilus machine is that you don't need a spot. You might be wondering, what? A spot? I'm hoping that is a new term for everyone. We'll talk about what a spot is when we talk about health and fitness in just a couple minutes. Well, let's talk about a couple different types of free weights. If you like free weight, okay, of course. Maria, she uses both. And I think probably a good idea, right? A little variety. It might help prevent injury. Sometimes you use the Nautilus. Sometimes you use free weights. Sometimes you go on a run. Sometimes you do yoga. You let those muscles heal. You let them rest up so that you can bulk up. A big part of gaining muscle is letting the muscles rest. Oh, dumbbell. You know, okay, dumbbell. Let's talk about dumbbells. Right here. 
These are dumbbells that, hang on, that, oh no, let me get rid of that too. That is a barbell. So the woman lifting those weights right there, she is using a barbell. A barbell is going to require you to use both hands, barbell. But dumbbells are a type of free weight and you can probably pick those up with one hand. Dumbbells, barbells. Don't know what you call those in your language. It's probably not dumbbell or barbell. But if you notice that dumb isn't part of that word, you might hear somebody being called a dumbbell if you think somebody is dumb. It's probably not very nice. It's probably not the meanest thing, but oh, I'm such a dumbbell. You could call yourself that. It's not the worst thing in the world, but some people might take offense. He pumped up his muscles. He's very bulky and muscular. It's a good sentence right there. It's a good sentence. All right, Freddie Wolf, are free weights cheaper than the Nautilus one? I like what you did there. Freddie made a joke. Get it? Hang on. Where are the free weights? Free weights. They don't cost anything. Very funny. Very funny. Are you a dad? Sounds like a dad joke to me. Nicely done. Wait, are people, are people, Audi, are you guys just making jokes about the free weights? No, no, no. Free. I know. I know Audi's. I know. Wait, here. You prefer, you prefer French fries to free weights? You prefer eating French fries over working out. I can get it. Okay. Hang on. Okay. Let's, let's, hey, Chef Cat's here. My friend from Turkey. Welcome. Okay. Let's talk about, let's talk about why they're called free weights. I think some people are making jokes. They're making jokes in the chat, which I like. Okay. Let's talk about why they're called free weights. If something, if, okay. If something is free, you have more movement. That's where the free comes from. With a machine, you don't have as much freedom to move. So if I'm doing an exercise like this with a machine, I don't have, we might say a free range of motion. That's a very advanced term. Free range of motion that's where those free weights come from okay a free range of motion i hope that makes sense if you have a free range of motion you can move in whichever direction you would like if you're working with a nautilus machine you don't have as much freedom to move yeah, unfortunately, I prefer lifting french fries <laughs> more than I like lifting weights, too. Yeah, Radu. I feel the same. Same. Oh, gosh. Do you really use the gym? I do. Yeah, sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. Um, Natalia is wondering, when I have a hotel lesson and I show the gym room, do I actually use the gym after I film a lesson? Uh, sometimes I do. Sometimes. Only sometimes. Yeah, keep the dad jokes coming. Love them. Love them. It's good stuff. Oh, Fabio. This is the barbell. Dumbbells are my bread and butter. Okay. So it must mean that Fabio uses those a lot. Nice. I never used the gym. Because I'm a kid. Apple the Frog is 14. I think you're 14. So in the United States, um, when my son and my daughter turned 13, they were able to go to the gym with us. So in the United States, or at least at my gym, 13 years old is the age in which people can start using the gym. 
13. So, all right, the next one is kettle weights. All you need right there is the pitcher. That's what we call those things in English. We call them kettle weights. So you could have dumbbells, have a barbell, you can have kettle weights. Oh, Apple. Apple's only 10. Wow. Is Apple might be up above a past uh, past your bedtime. Hopefully your grandmother doesn't come. I know it's very late in Thailand. So yeah, at 10, you would not be able to use the gym here either, unfortunately. This has been mentioned already in the chat, but that is a treadmill. So some people prefer to run on a treadmill. They may find it too hot outside. They might find it too cold outside. A treadmill can be very useful. Right here. We're going to talk about treadmills and elliptical machines right now. So this is an elliptical machine. Some people prefer elliptical machines. Using an elliptical machine might be less impact on your body than running on a treadmill. Using an elliptical machine might be less impact on your body than running on a treadmill. When we talk about impact, it's something like that. So when you're running on the road, when you're running on a treadmill, there is going to be impact on your body. You are going to hit the pavement. You are going to hit the road with your feet and there is going to be an impact. It might hurt your knees. It might hurt your joints. Joints are what we call when bone is connected. Like this, this might be a joint in my finger where I can bend it. So there might be impact on your joints when you're running on a treadmill. If you use an elliptical machine, there is going to be less impact. Treadmill versus elliptical machine. I will usually use an elliptical machine because I am old. I actually do have a problem with my ankle. I've talked about that on the channel before. It's nothing big, but about 10 years ago, my doctor said, yeah, you need to stop running. I used to run on the road. I used to run on the pavement and he said that was not, not great for people with feet like mine. So I use an elliptical machine most of the time. Joint. Yes. Joint. Yeah. Shevket. Uh, and again, I am not a doctor, but from what I've heard, yeah, you definitely don't want to start going to the gym too early. I've heard that if you start lifting weights at a young age, it will stunt your growth. It will stunt your growth. Not that now in the chat. Stunt your growth. That means if something stunts your growth, it stops a child from growing. So if they were supposed to be six feet tall, yeah, we don't use meters in the United States. We use feet. If somebody was supposed to be six feet tall and their growth was stunted, they might only be 5'10". They might not grow as tall as they should have. Stunt your growth. I think we have this one here, which is to spot to spot. Now I'm hoping if someone has known every single word so far, 
I hope this is one you don't know. And even if you have known all of the words so far, I'm hoping that because I am speaking English clearly, fairly slowly, it is helping you with your English comprehension. But let's talk about this one here, spot. If you are using free weights, it's probably a good idea to have a spotter. Spot is the verb we use, and that is a person who makes sure that the person lifting weights doesn't get hurt. So you can see that person standing there. They are a spotter. They are spotting that person to make sure they don't get hurt. If you're using a Nautilus machine, you don't need a spotter. You really don't. It's for free weights. So that person is spotting the person lifting weights. And I do have a sentence for you. When lifting with free weights, it's often safer to have a spotter. Okay. So hopefully that's a new word for you. Spot. Please let me know in the comments. Did you know the English term spot? Spot on. All right. Well, if someone is spot on, it means they are exactly correct. They got it right. What's that? Blissful Mommy says, I've heard treadmill to be used meaning rut. Hmm. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't know what that one would mean. If someone is stuck in a rut, it means they're not having a very good time at life. If you're stuck in a rut, rut it's almost like a depression. If you're stuck in a rut, uh, there might be a rut on the road. It's like a small hole. Uh, my tire just hit a rut. But I don't know about it being used with a uh, treadmill. Hello, Hilton. How are you? Welcome. Don't worry about being late. Yeah, Brazil is in the house. And uh, you can always watch on replay. And you can always listen on the podcast. Ah, uh, Yawin's here. Hey, Yawin from Taiwan. Oh, spotlight. Sure. Right now, I do have some spotlights on me. It's a pretty powerful light, would be a spotlight. Nice. So many ways to use spot. Maybe we should do a deep dive on spot. Spotting an enemy can be alarming. Yeah, if you see, you might, oh, hey, I spot a bird in the trees. Yeah, spotting can be used as a verb like that. You might get a spot on your shirt. Also a stain. Yeah. If you're eating greasy fries and you wipe your hand on your shirt, you might leave a spot. Yeah. But you can also use it with health and fitness. The person in the picture who's standing up is spotting the person lifting weights. Oh yeah. Oh, you might have a special spot on the sofa. And that is your spot. That is where you sit. And if the kids try to sit there, you kick them out. Yeah, that's my spot. That's dad's spot. That's mom's spot. Move. Get out. Leave. Adios. Nice. Yeah, maybe we should maybe we should do a deep dive on spot one day. We talked about jogging. We talked about running earlier. We could also talk about sprints, sprints. Sprinting is when you run very fast for a short period of time and you definitely want to warm up before you do sprints. But some people like to get healthier. They like to get faster by running sprints. Yeah, sprints. The older I get, the less I run sprints, but it's a good workout running sprints. When I played football, when I played American football, 
We used to have to run sprints at the end of every practice. It was so tiring. I hated it. We called it conditioning. It would condition our bodies for the game. They would make us better conditioning. Oh yeah, Freddie, you might have a spot on the beach or at the ocean where you like to surf. Yes, yeah, some people, hey, some people get to the beach early so they can get a good spot. You might, yeah, we a spot on the beach would be where you place your towel. So yeah, spot so many different ways. Kate, hope you're doing well. Welcome. Sprint and dash, they're pretty much the same thing. When I was in elementary school, we had a race called the 40 yard dash and it was a sprint. Yeah. But when you're working out, you might hear someone say, Hey, I'm going to go do sprints for five minutes, but they wouldn't say, Hey, I'm going to go dashing for five minutes. And we could do a whole deep dive on dashing. If somebody is dashing, you might say they're quite handsome but also dash could be running really quickly. Also, you could say, hey, I have to dash to the store for some sugar. I'll be right back. That means you're going to go to the store really quickly and then come back. You know what? Since this is health and fitness, maybe I shouldn't have used sugar as an example. Wait, I need to dash to the store for some apples. What that? That's healthier. That's healthier. Oh gosh, hamstring. I can't really show you my hamstring right now, but that is the back of the leg. Very painful. Your hamstrings. You definitely want to warm up so you don't hurt your hamstring. It's a good one. Good one. Ooh, I think I know that. Where's Harry? Harry, I think Harry is from China. I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Harry is from China, I think. Mary, she is from Iran. Welcome. You know what? I've said before, I want to visit Iran. I do. And I looked up the safety index for countries. And I looked at Iran. And I've heard Iran is a very safe country. But on the website, it was kind of in the middle. It wasn't extremely dangerous, but it wasn't extremely safe. Like um, Qatar, where Angelo is from, I told him that was one of the safest countries to visit. Iran was in the middle. And when I looked, there was no reason that Iran should have been dangerous. They said some parts near Afghanistan were dangerous. But if you visited Tehran, it was, it was one of the safest cities. They said mugging, pickpocketing has increased a little, but you don't have to worry about scams in Iran. So I would like to visit Iran one day. One day. It's in my top. Oh, Harry's from Indonesia. Sorry, Harry. I thought I knew. I took a guess. Hotspot. There you go. Some people can use their phones as a hotspot so they can give other people their Wi-Fi. That's, that's how we use it in English. Your phone might have a hotspot. So if your friend needs to borrow your internet, you can use your phone as a hotspot. Nice. All right. I think I got another one for you. That thing. I'm not sure what you call it in your language, but we call that thing a jump rope. We call that thing a jump rope. So it can be used as a noun, but it also can be used as a verb. You can jump rope with a jump rope. You can jump rope with a jump rope. So both a noun and a verb, but... We never make that one word. 
it's always two words. Okay. If we put those two words together and made one word, it might look a little funny. Might look a little funny. All right. Let me check the chat here. Skipping that, that is another way you could run. I, I don't have free range of motion right now, so I can't get up and demonstrate how you could skip, but skipping is a way that you could, oh wait, skipping, you do that regularly. Oh, hey, I think when you're skipping down the road or skipping down the hall, those people look like they are in a really good mood, skipping. So I call it skipping rope, yes. Harry from Indonesia, yes, you could say, hey, I'm gonna go skip some rope to your friend at the gym. I'm gonna go into this room and skip some rope. Yeah. Oh, where's Harry right now? Oh, he, he's skipping rope in the next room over. Yeah, skipping rope. Look at that, I'm glad. Okay, so jump rope. It's a little bit different in uh, some other languages. Right, that is going to do it for today's English lesson. We went through a lot of terms about health and fitness. And I would like to thank you all. Thank you for joining. I know there are a lot of English teachers out there and you chose my channel to learn English. So thank you. That means a lot. All right. I hope you all have a good week. I am going to work on an English lesson about forgetting, forgetting ways we talk about forgetting in English and some things you might forget in English. I know the first one is going to be forgetting to set your alarm clock. I hate that when that happens. You might oversleep. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. And I'll see you next week.